Hi, welcome to Office Hours. My name is Patrick Curran, and along with Dan Bauer, we make up Curran Bauer Analytics. In a prior episode of Office Hours, I explored the question of what is growth curve modeling and how does it compare to other more traditional methods. Today, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about the role of how we code time in the models. I briefly alluded to it in a prior video, and today what I'd like to do is explore what the implications are for how we rescale our metric of time um, to allow us to make certain interpretations about parameters in our model. Very briefly, I want to teleport back to maybe sixth or seventh grade where we learned how to plot a line in a, in a Cartesian space. So if you go back to way back when, you remember we had an X and Y axis, we could plot some line and we could write an equation for it where it was A equals, say, excuse me, Y equals A plus BX and A was the intercept and B was the slope, and that was rise over run, and a one unit increase in X was associated with a B unit change in Y, and then someone along the way taught us that the intercept value, the A, is the point at which the line intersected with the Y axis. Because something to keep in mind is, although we often draw plots like this, is in reality, right, they go to plus and minus infinity both ways, and they're four quadrants. And so this is going to play a role in just a moment as how we expand these to the growth model. Is the line, you know, if it's linear to plus and minus infinity, it goes beyond all four of these quadrants. And this is simply the point where it intersects the y axis. So how does this have anything to do with growth modeling? Well, what we try to do in a growth model is to use our set of repeated measures that we obtained on some outcome. And the example that I used earlier uh, had to do with aggressive behavior in children. And what we want to do is instead of saying age six predicts age seven and age seven predicts age eight, is we want to use the repeated measures at ages six, seven, eight, nine, ten to estimate some underlying trajectory. So let's imagine we have, I'm going to draw a very long line here and we'll see why in a moment. Let's say that the youngest kids in our sample are six. So we have age six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And let's say that we fit a growth model. Maybe we can use a multi-level model. Maybe we can use a structural equation model. In later videos, I talk about each of those. But however we estimate these with our data, that our numerical value of age is six. Now, we estimate this in the prediction of aggressive behavior, and we get what we called earlier some fixed effect, and that's the average trajectory across, across all the individuals in the sample. And then we had some random effects, which is the variance of the individual differences in the trajectory themselves. So there's individual variability in, in the level of the trajectory, there's individual variability in the rate of change over time. Now what I want to do is talk briefly about what are the implications for the interpretation of our parameter estimates as a function of how we code our time variable. Well, jump back to sixth grade of what we just talked about is the intercept of a line is where it intersects the y-axis. That's going to be the key to understanding the interpretation of these values. So notice if we have six, that goes five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, so in our usual axis presentation, that's the zero value. Now, if these are the trajectories that exist between ages six and 10, we're gonna get a slope, right? So we're gonna have some, we'll call it mu beta, that'll be the average slope, and we'll get some variability of the slopes. We're of course also gonna get an intercept, but remember the intercept is gonna be the model implied value of the outcome when the predictor is zero. Well, here the predictor is age, and age zero is we're gonna to have to project that line to where it intersects on the y-axis, all right? So this would be the fixed effects, and then all the individual trajectories would be projected as well. All right, that's not a great drawing, I know, but it's actually kind of hard to do across this length of the board. 
But what we're going to get is we're going to get some average, let's call it mu alpha, to be the fixed effect for the intercept. It's going to be the model implied value of aggressive behavior when children are age zero. Well, we can see that doesn't even make sense. It's very much like when we learned in regression about an uh, intercept of a regression line if uh, weight is zero or height is zero or IQ is zero. It's outside the range of both the data that we observe but also the logical construct is that we don't have aggressive behavior in kids who are zero years of age. So we are going to get um, an interpretable average slope and variability in the slope, but the intercept of that is going to be outside the logical and empirical range and it's not going to be interpretable. All right, so what can we do about that? Well, let me see if I can keep part of this. I think I can. All right, well, what we can do, remember that, that y-axis was here, if we want to make it interpretable, we can just rescale time to bring the y-axis up to here, say, all right, the initial value. Well, how do we do that if that's 6? Well, what we do is literally in our data file, if it's in a multi-level, we do it at the level of the variable. If it's in a structural equation model, we change the values of the factor loadings, and we talk about these in, in later videos. But if the youngest age is six, think about it, it's a really simple logical syllogism. If the youngest age is six, and we want the intercept to be at the initial value, then we just subtract six from all of the ages, so they're now zero, one, two, three, and four, all right? This is why so often you may have seen in published applications or in books or in, in research talks where time is coded zero, one, two, three. This is why, because what it does now is notice the trajectories haven't changed at all, right? They're exactly the same, but now mu alpha does not represent the model implied value of aggressive behavior when a child is zero. Mu alpha represents the model implied value of aggressive behavior at age six. And how we built that into the model was we subtracted six from everyone. So in this case, time is now zero, one, two, three, and four. So we get a fixed effect of the slope and the variability in the slope. We get a fixed effect of the intercept and the variability in the intercept, where the intercept is interpreted as the initial observation. All right, now as soon as we get our head around that, we can see that we can actually place time anywhere we want. So another common option that we can do, and again, I'll see if I can save my trajectories. Let me pull this, is Maybe we're not interested at the beginning of the trajectory. Maybe we're interested in taking that y-axis from zero up to six to bring it up to 10, all right? So what we're gonna do is pull the y-axis. See, all we're doing is the trajectories are the same. We're just moving the axes up and down along here. We're just rescaling it. Well, now in this frame, if we want the model implied value to be what is the intercept at the oldest age, well, that needs to be zero, all right? So remember the age is 10, so how do we make 10 zero? So it's gonna be age minus 10. Here's where it gets kind of weird, all right? So we have 10 minus 10, but now we have nine minus 10, which is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, all right? It seems totally weird to have age be negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, but it's fine. We're just exerting control over the model and the scaling of time. We know that an age of negative two, a time scale of negative two in this particular framework corresponds to eight year olds. We just have to keep track of who's who. So now we get, notice in all these, this is our third scaling of time, right? Is that in all of these, that mu beta stays the same, all right? So it's invariant, is the fixed effect for the slope and the variance for the slopes are gonna stay the same, but we're moving what is implied by the intercept, all right? So now we're gonna have a mu alpha, which is the trajectory, the, the intercept of the trajectory, but now it's gonna be what is the model implied value of the outcome when age is the oldest, the last 
period of time. Where might we do this? Well, imagine you're doing some kind of preventive intervention or a randomized clinical trial, and you want to know not so much what is the mean and variability in the starting point, but you want to know what is mean and variability at the final time point. This is how you would do it. And then there's one final thing that we could do. And again, let me see if I can get away with this. I'm going to take this. All right, again, imagine this is, woo, pardon me. Ha ha, got it back. We have Y here. We moved Y up to here. We move Y up to here. There may be some rationale why, where we want to put Y right at the middle assessment that we want to have the intercept to be the model implied value of the outcome at the middle of the developmental process. So you already see what's going to happen. If we want it at 8, right, we're going to need to subtract 8 from each age because it's going to make that point 0. So now 7 minus 8, it's going to be negative 1, negative 2, plus 1, plus 2. So now we have another seemingly odd scaling of time, but it actually makes perfect sense. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. You see it's still linear, it's still progressing, it's still equally spaced. But now we've simply moved to the zero point from the end to the middle. We get good old mu beta, right? It hasn't done a thing, it hasn't changed. There's always the same mean of the slopes, and there's always the same variability in the slopes. But now notice, here is mu alpha which is the intercept, and it's the model implied value of the outcome when age is zero, and here that's scaled to be eight. So we can start with age six, we can start with zero, we can end with zero, we can have zero in the middle, and there are actually a number of different ways that we can do this as well. Um, we can derive the optimal point of age based on the characteristics of the trajectory. And Greg Hancock has a really wonderful paper on that. And we have the, the citation for that along with the text for this video. And then all of the implications of this are explored in a lot of detail in a paper that we collaborated with Jeremy Biazons on, and we have that citation as well. So the walkaway point here is we have total control over where we want to put the y-axis. We can have it in its natural zero point. And again, there may be uh, applications where that's perfectly desirable. Maybe it's trials and learning. You're working in cognitive sciences and you want to know what is the model implied value of accuracy before you've had any learning or any practice trials. So we can have it in the natural zero. We can rescale it where zero is the earliest point, the latest point, the middle point. And in all of these, the linear slope of the trajectory remains constant, but the intercept changes. And so it's always a source of confusion is if you start the time with zero, you get some estimate of the intercept and the variance of that. If you end it, you get a very different estimate, yet the models fit exactly the same. All four of these codings result in identical model fit. And that always is a source of confusion when it shouldn't be is it's simply where are you sliding? Just imagine that you have control of that y-axis and you're just sliding it along to place it for where it's of most use to you in terms of either stability of estimation or more likely is interpretability of the resulting parameters. So in a nutshell, that is the role of the zero point in time and I hope that's been of some use. Thank you for your time.